Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I am here with a very special guest, AJ Porfirio from Van Ryder Games. How are you doing, AJ? Hey, good, doing good. Uh, thanks for calling me special. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everyone that. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a great day yesterday. Do you want to tell us about it? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so yesterday, March 5th, we launched season two of the graphic novel adventures, which are our branded series of game books that uh, they're the sort of pick your path style of game book where you can um, you can make the choices. Right. And they're in graphic novels or comics. So instead of being a lot of text-based reading, you're actually interacting and engaging with the frames of books. So we launched season two yesterday, which is the, the second set of five books. Uh, and we had a great day. We raised uh, just around 60,000 uh, on Kickstarter's day one cutoff, which is less than 24 hours, um, but because we launched at 10 a.m. But yeah, thrilled with that uh, day two's going very well, very strong. I think we're, we just maybe crossed the 70,000 mark. So we're ecstatic and excited. Uh, it's going to last for 20 days. So we got 20 days, we're, we're strapped in and we're excited to get this to folks. So I have a question about this. Their original language is French. Correct. So how do you choose, do you read French? No. <laughs> Okay, so how do you choose your next set of graphic novel adventures? Yeah, so that's a it's a great question. Um, when, when I first found these these books, I actually found Captive, which is in our season one set, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the original publisher, Makaka Editions, who does the French books, had they had partnered up with Blue Orange Europe, and Blue Orange Europe did did a really limited. English version of Captive to sort of show off the system to hopefully gain potential licensed partners. Um, so that's how I found it. I found the English version of Captive. I didn't even know. I thought that was the only one. As far as I knew, that was the only one. I saw it on BGG. I started reading the, the comments and ratings and people were, they liked it, but a lot of the reviews and ratings said, well, you can't really find these anywhere. So I'm not really going to necessarily recommend it because not really anywhere to get it and I was like hmm well that seems like an opportunity like I was already just attracted to the product as a gamer right so I said okay well, let me get a hold of this and see if I like it and then of course I did I loved it um and so yeah I engaged them uh, in conversations to get the license and and we did and I around that time once I started researching I discovered wow there's a whole heck of a lot more of these um and so we basically just went in and gobbled up as many and all of them as we could. Um, and so we have a really strong partnership with these guys now. Um, it is, there is a lot into the decision of which ones to release in which season. Um, I'm not going to go too, too far down into that rabbit hole necessarily, but um, the Sherlock line is very robust, so we want to continue that one. Um, Pirates is a new adventure and has – there's there's a – we're doing two books now, but there's actually a third one as well um, that we'll, we'll probably do at some point. And then Mystery is a whole new line. Um, it's not a line. There's one of them. But they actually have – they Makaka does regular comics also. So there's actually a Mystery comic in print um, that it's based on. And so I don't know. Hopefully there will be more um, of those in the game book variety. but. Yeah, for now, I think it's just the one of those. Okay, so since you were only able to read Captive in the original, um, what inspires you to pick the books that you pick? Are, are you picking before you are fully aware of what's in them at the time that you make the choice? Like for Pirates, did it just was it about Pirates that seemed cool, so you went for it? Yeah, no, so I completely blind. I was like, this, this system is awesome. I only had read Captive, um, and but I, I loved it. I, the other themes were so cool. I, it's just one of those things you feel confident, I felt confident in and I wanted to, I wanted to do more than just one book. Um, I wanted it to be, I wanted us to support the line. So, uh, yeah, no, like most of these books before we have them translated, 
uh, actually all of them with the exception of captive, we've not read them. Um, so, and there's things that as we do get them translated, there's French puzzles that don't necessarily always translate to English that we have to right. do development work on. And, and, and we make some changes for our market, um, with, with the approval of course of our partners. Um, uh, so there's all that, but all the stories are really great. We, you know, everyone has their favorites, but the cool thing is like, it's not like everyone universally agrees captives are the best or your town's the best. It's, it's, or pirates or mm-hmm. the Sherlock books. Everyone sort of has their favorite. So there's something for everyone. Well, I gotta tell you, I was really impressed with mystery. I hope that they make another in that series because yeah. I thought the writing was really snappy. Uh, the story progressed in ways like, remember how we talked about captive and I said it felt like a point and click. Mm-hmm. I thought that mystery was the most point and clicky of mm-hmm. the ones that we've done, but I do want to ask. So in the first series, right? You, you had five totally different experiences to offer. It was really, really different. Yep. And in this one, you have kind of two, like, doubles, I guess. You have yep. the Sherlock Holmes books and the Pirates books. And what inspired you to do it that way this time, as opposed to vary it up? I'm um, sure a lot of it is um, what we have available to us. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some other titles. There's actually a lot of more considerations that we put into things. Sometimes it may be, uh, there was one book we were considering for this season that we ultimately replaced, Mm -hmm. um, because how do I put this? Um, there were some non game related challenges that we need, we have to get figured out Mm -hmm. before we can, can do that. So I know that's very ambiguous, but all I'm all that to say, like there's a lot that goes into the decisions of what Mm -hmm. we do and and when we put things out. Um, but in the case of pirates specifically, it, um, the great chase, so pirates, the great chase is the first one. It leads straight into, uh, pirates, the city of skulls. So we could have done the first one and then sort of left a cliffhanger for a while. But I actually think, in my opinion, City of Skulls is a superior book. Um, and so I want the first one's fun, but the mm-hmm. second one like really takes it to a new level. So that I want the fans to be able to experience that book as well. Um, so that's why we decided to sort of do those two together. And then, like I said, with Sherlock, that's there's the most titles of Sherlock. Um, so the fans can definitely expect there will be more of those. Mm-hmm. Um, Moriarty technically does continue where four investigations left off, but the Sherlock books are completely um, self-contained and so are the pirates. To be honest, you can play city of skulls without having played the great chase. Um, But the new Sherlock books do new things. So like, for example, in Moriarty, you actually Moriarty joins up in this sort of loose alliance with Sherlock and and Lestrade and, and Watson. And so, now you can play as Moriarty and the way he works when he questions people is different from the way Sherlock and Watson work. Um, and then the, the other one, Sherlock and Irene, it actually can support two players, um, competitive play. So one person can play the role of Sherlock and the other can play the role of Irene. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, it's, you're passing the book back and forth. So it's not like right. you're not, you're not playing at the exact same time, but It does, the system does support a competitive mode uh, to see who can kind of do better in solving the investigations. That's cool. So even though they're, yeah, even though we're doubling up, um, as you put it, there's new things in each book and I keep that, I think keeps it fresh, but we definitely wanted to have, you know, a new, a totally new theme in line, which is what we're doing, you know, with mystery. Right. Um, And every, every season or however we continue to release these, uh, we'll always have something new in it. So, how many, I mean, it seems like there's a whole lot of options in terms of what Makaka has already put out. Uh, like, how many seasons could you foresee Graphic Novel Adventures going? I mean, weird things happen, uh, but... Yeah, I mean, everything depends on the support for the line, right? Like, if customers continue to support it, then we're going to keep bringing it, bringing them to everyone. So, it's hard for me to sit here and say, oh, there's going to be five seasons and that'll mm-hmm. be it, or... Um, I can say pretty confidently with how this Kickstarter is going and how the last one did and how 
uh, the books are being received in retail, like a season three is, is I'll, I can basically guarantee it at this point. Um, so that's, that's as far as I can go. But like I said, we, as long as we're, they're getting support, we continue to, we plan to continue to support this line. That's awesome. Um, so how has your relationship with Makaka evolved over the years? So has, have y'all, I mean, you've been working with them for a while now. Um, it's actually only been, uh, it seems like a while, but it's really only been, um, I guess a year and a half. Mm -hmm. We, all this happened like really quickly, um, in the fall of, I guess, 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been good. Like we, we have a great relationship with them. Uh, we work really well with those guys. Um, we were in contact with them pretty, pretty regularly. Um, they, yeah, so it's good. It's, it improves all the time. Um, they, they're, I just saw they had posted on their Facebook page about our Kickstarter. Like they're always very excited and rooting for us. And it's the same in reverse. I mean, we, you know, when they're doing new stuff over there, we're always excited about it and looking at it and, and figuring out what we can do, uh, working with them. Nice. All right. So you've also had the recent development of getting your own office, mm -hmm. which is where I'm Skyping you, right? So yeah, yeah. how long has it been since you went full time? So it's coming up on a year. It hasn't quite been a year yet. Um, I, the last day at my day job, um, uh, for my previous company, it was May 1st of last year mm -hmm. officially, but we had got, we had actually gotten the office, um, a few days before that. And so I've, we've been in the office pretty much since we started, um, full time, but of course, Van Rider Games has been around for, uh, what, I guess we're going on six, seven, uh, 2011, eight years. So, yeah. um, we did, you know, we paid our dues. Like we did, we did definitely a crawl, walk, run approach, um, which I think has served us well. Mm -hmm. Um, every company's different, but for us that worked out best. Um, and to the point where when we did make the plunge, we, we were able to do things like, you know, get a small office here, um, which is immensely, it's been immensely important. We were actually planning on working out of our house for a while mm -hmm. and, we just decided, you know, let's just look and see what's around. Um, this is our, our local hometown, and we found something that was perfect size-wise and was with a monthly you know payment we could afford, and I don't regret it for a second. Like, it's been phenomenal. That's great. So one question I do have about that, though, is um, how has that changed your own – relationships you're like i mean you've kind of grown as a publisher over the over the last while so hostage negotiators mm -hmm. your design mm -hmm. um but now you are working with you know game books that already exist and having them translated you're developing other people's designs like with the big score um you know do you primarily see yourself these days as a publisher as developer as a designer yourself, like how are those roles yep. mixing in your life right now? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, and that, and that, that mix sort of morphs as you go, right? Like, I mean, in the, in the beginning, very much I was a designer, you know, I, I was coming at it as a designer. I didn't necessarily have, uh, aspirations to own a game company or do anything like that. But over time and as we've grown, that's morphed and changed. Um, I'm very much an entrepreneur, so I'm not surprised it sort of w went how it went. Um, mm -hmm. but now, like if I was answering that question, like today, like what does AJ do? I mean, I've, I'm very much heavily on the publisher side versus doing design work. Um, I still do some, I, I get to scratch a lot of my design itch doing development. So yes, mm -hmm. like we, I, I wear all the hats. Um, uh, we wear all the hats. They're, we're still very small, um, but growing. And so, uh, for example, we hired our first employee this year. I'm not sure if you, if you knew that, but we hired Sean Barsos. And so he's our first official employee, um, of the company. And so I've learned, I've had to learn all that. I mean, I do, I pretty much handle all the business aspects. Um, right. Evan does a lot of the marketing and he's a graphic designer as well. So he does a lot of that work. Um, 
So, but from a publishing standpoint, we, we handle, we share a lot of the load design and any design and development we do, uh, development, especially, uh, Evan and I usually work together on that. Uh, this season of books is actually the first time one of us has, so Evan's been pretty separate from the, the process for these books. And it's actually been Sean, uh, taking a, a lot of that load off of his plate and, and him and mm-hmm. I working together since that, this is sort of his first rodeo with a product line. And so, but he's, he's been great. I can't say enough good things about him. Um, and so it's exciting. We're doing things like that. I mean, there's, we get new business opportunities in terms of potential partners and, and other things all the time. So like, you know, a lot of times it's, it may, maybe it doesn't work out or maybe it's in process. I can't necessarily sort of go into detail about what those are, but like, yeah, it's exciting stuff. And like, I guess bringing it back for full circle, like having an office and uh, being able to go to more trade shows and, and like playing the part of like, Hey, we, we don't look at this anymore as a side gig. Like this is our, this is our livelihood this is our job. We love it. Um, and we're going to give it everything we have. So, um, what can you tell me about the year ahead for Van Ryder? So what after so graphic got, novel ventures can we expect? Yeah. So we got, we got a lot of cool things planned. Um, so season two, I mean, that's coming. I mean, even I'll even mention, I mean, we have some things that we've kickstarted, but aren't necessarily out yet. So we have mm-hmm. the Crusoe crew, uh, which is actually in the running for a Mensa, Mensa Mind Games Award. So we're very excited about that. Um, that's a cooperative version of our graphic novel adventures. And so uh, we're really excited. A few of the advanced shipping backers have already got that. They're, they're enjoying it so far. We're extremely excited for that. That will be out for in retail probably around the June timeframe, June, mm-hmm. uh, origins. It's going to be an origins release for us. <clears throat> so we're very excited about that. Um, very soon, not very far after the season two Kickstarter for graphic novel adventures, we will be launching the K- Kickstarter for hostage negotiator career. Um, the career expansion, which uh, you, I see your big smile. Um, <laughs> I am like insanely excited to get this out. Um, I, it's, I've been working on it for a long time and to be quite honest, like what we talked about earlier, having to do, you know, a lot, a lot less time for design and doing publishing work. Um, yeah. it's just taken longer than I liked, I would have liked, but we're here We're it's about ready. Um, play testing has been going very well. I keep, I'm keeping this very tight knit in terms of the play testing, um, because there are secrets and surprises and things in there. I just don't want to get out. So even on the Kickstarter page, we're, we're having discussions like, what do we want to share? What don't we want to share? Um, but man, I cannot wait. So just imagine a full storyline and scenario wrapped up in your, in your hostage negotiator games. And, and that's what you're, that's what everyone's going to get. And so that will sort of bring the line full circle. That's, that's going to complete sort of my full, full vision for the product. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it we're gonna there's gonna be a couple of new abductor packs, so you're gonna get uh, abductor packs nine and ten, also as part of that Kickstarter, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, we'll probably do a demand pack two, uh, and maybe a few other a few other goodies. So very excited about that. Um, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, that'll be it'll be Kickstarter in April, end of April, and uh, hopefully we'll have it out before the year ends. Um, all right. that one, I'm oh, sorry. I said, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you can tell I'm, I'm so excited about it. Um, it's, it's been fun to work on and man, like Sean, Sean, he, he likes it. He's, he's basically like, man, this takes hostage negotiator to a new level for me. So, um, it, for, for people who already like it, it's gonna, they're gonna love it. It's, I don't think it's going to change anyone's mind. Like if you, if you don't like hostage negotiator, I don't think like career career doesn't change anything that much where you're, it's going to change your mind on the game. Uh, But luckily for us, we, there seems to be a lot more people that like it than don't. Um, So there's that we're working on another project. Um, We can't really, I can't really talk about right now, but it is another solo only design. So I'll, I'll say that. Um, Is it your design or is it someone else's? Uh, 
Oh, come on. That's not that much of a spoiler. It's a, okay, sure. I'll say that. <laughs> it's a code. It's a co-design um, of mine, me and Evan, from me and Evan. All right. So it'll be our first, we worked on obviously developing and stuff together. Um, I, I was pretty heavily involved in, in detective and, um, but yeah, this will be our first true sort of co-design. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's all I'll say. Cause I'm tempted to say more. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, I am excited about detective, uh, as well. That one is Kickstarter exclusive, correct? Yeah. So that's in our VR. So we, we, um, created a, a brand imprint, whatever you want to call it for games that will not go through distribution. Um, and detective city of angels is the first one in our, we call it our BRG select, mm-hmm. um, catalog or games or products, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, that one's direct. Um, and that that's, we've been working on that one for a long time it is scheduled to, um, production scheduled to be completed in early mid April. Um, and so we're very excited to get that one. That one, oh man, it's amazing. And then solo, you're going to love it too. As a solo player, uh, there's a completely, uh, playable solo mode with a full paragraph book and everything. Um, so it's, man, it's, it's such a great product. Like I'm, we're so thrilled to get it out there. I'm looking forward to it. I like a good mystery set. Actually, like, three of the boxes back there are Sherlock Holmes, and I got one of Mythos Tales on this shelf. So I'm oh, yeah. really excited to see what Detective is going to look like. Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. All right. So just one more question since we're here. Um, what have you been playing for fun? Oh, we've actually been playing Betrayal Legacy. So, really? Yeah. Yep. We're, uh, I think, a little more halfway through. Uh, I love Betrayal. Like, I was... When I got back in the hobby, that was one of the first games I played and just, like, fell in love with. Um, so, like, having that having that sort of camp, continuing campaign and legacy elements is just, like, awesome. Um, and so it's it's that's been an inner office game. And then in our group, uh, we've played Endeavor a couple times the last few um, sessions. Mm-hmm. I really like that. It was really – it's really awesome. And I'm not – I'm more of a thematic gamer, but, man, certain Euros, like, really – jive with me and that the la- that's the latest one that that i've just sort of really loved um what else have we played uh oh i think i'm mostly caught up on time stories i love time stories um i think there's a new one either coming out or just came out that that i need to do and i i was excited to see they're doing a new format i'm not sure if you saw that but well hold on it sounds good Okay. <laughs> All right. So time stories. Yeah. Yeah. So time stories. I'm mostly <laughs> caught up on that. Um, I'm interested in the new format they're going to come out with. So I'm kind of excited about that one. Um, Gloomhaven. I wish we were playing more. That's one of my favorites. Um, I want to get back to the campaign. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a lot of the recent stuff I've been playing. Are you doing much solo gaming right now? Most of my solo times has been going to a career um, and Mm -hmm. the new product or new project uh, that has yet to be named. Um, The top secret projects. Yeah, that's, we've been doing, we've been, that one, it's going to, it's already been a lot of testing. It's going to be a lot more testing. So um, that's where most of my solo time gaming time has gone. And to be honest, my kids are starting to get a little older to where now Uh I'll, like we've been playing the vanilla betrayal with my I've been playing vanilla betrayal with my kids and like man they're into that one so like how old are they they're 11 uh 10 and 6 but almost 7 he'll be 7 at the end of the month the youngest gotcha so and he's probably like the biggest gamer of the three of them like he's <laughs> I love he has that he has that gamer enthusiasm for like like we all do um the other two are they're more uh, they probably choose video games given the choice but every once in a while i'll get them so, sitting down for a board game so you're at the point in your life now where you have a built-in gaming group i have a built-in gaming group i have built-in solo <laughs> games because like the books too like i mean when we get the books translated like i, I play those i play the yeah. graphic novel adventures so um 
outside, but I'm waiting for like certain things like I'm broken. I'm waiting for, um, yes. And, and like, I'll see games on my shelf, like Nemo's war and mage night that I want to get out. But it's just like, <laughs> I wish we, I wish I could clone myself and like have all the experiences, but, um, uh, it's a great time to be a gamer. Great time to be a solo gamer. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for your time, AJ. It has been really great to have you on. Oh, man. Absolutely. Anytime. All right. And everybody who's okay. watching this, thank you for being here in the channel. And leave any questions you have for us in the comments. Thank you so much, AJ. Yes. You bet.